Hey everybody, Flying Scorpion here, and this video is about playing Harrow in 2022. So Harrow is one of the lesser played Warframes, sitting at about 0.72% both in 2020 and 2021. So he hasn't really changed that much even after the Prime came out. Uh, where is Harrow? He's still, you see a little bit of people with the Prime there. He's not that popular for Warframe. And uh, I would say that's because he's kind of a pain in the ass to play. He requires more skill than a good amount of other Warframes. He's not a tank. You cannot just stand there AFK with him. He is micro intensive. Lots of casting your abilities, managing your cooldown timers, uh, having strong situational awareness. Uh, if enemies come up behind you, you can easily die as Harrow. He does not have strong survivability like if an enemy gets through your shields or if they catch you with no shields you can easily get one shot because uh, you really don't have a high hit pool and you do not have a lot of armor and uh another thing that kind of i think pushes people away from harrow is that he's um he's a support warframe that requires getting kills in order to support so basically your teammates need to let you kill things in order for you to support them and give them energy. What I have done with Harrow to help alleviate that problem is I use the Tribunal Augment mod. Tribunal Augment mod makes it so that when your allies kill enemies that you have a cast your Condemn on, they will still get energy. You'll still get energy, you'll all still get the healing, and this means that you can play truly more of a support frame. You don't have to hog the kills. And uh, one of the really cool things about this is the way that I have built him uh, is I'm using a Kubrow that makes me invisible. Let me just go back, go to upgrade. I'm using the Harass Kubrow, which uh, allows you to turn invisible when enemies are within 24 meters of you. And this solves a lot of the other problems with Harrow, like particularly having having to constantly be inputting commands and not being able to stop and take a breather on an endurance run. Um, when you're playing a long endurance run, playing as Harrow can get tiring. And so it's nice to be able to just stop, take a sip of coffee, maybe stretch, just relax for a moment. And this companion allows you to do that. You can stay invisible indefinitely. And another cool thing about this is you can cast your abilities you can walk into nullifier bubbles and you still will remain stealth. It's not until you shoot or swing your weapon that you break your stealth. So that combined with this allows you to play a stealth Warframe that generates invincibility, critical strike chance, fire rate, healing, crowd control, all of that stuff. Um, and unlimited energy, really, all while being invisible. For the Arcanes, I'm using Arcane Velocity to really ramp up the fire rate on my pistol, and I'm, we're gonna use the pistol a lot for doing damage, and then I have Arcane Rage to increase the damage of the primary weapon on critical shot. The rest of the mods are more so just kind of quality of life. We've got ability duration, ability duration, we've got some range, uh, faster cast speed, uh, redirection is helpful both for survivability and also for getting more duration out of his second ability penance. Primed flow is very good on Harrow. Uh, you re it, it really is helpful. If you haven't tried playing with prime flow or flow on Harrow, you should try it. Having that massive energy pool is quite nice. And vitality is more so for playing lower level content. I wouldn't really rely on it on a long endurance run on high level content because you really do not want to be health tanking with Harrow. He dies so easily if they get past your shields. Unless, of course, you use the helmet system to give him parasitic armor, but that's a completely different build. And I don't, I don't really think that's worth it. I think that Harrow's original kit is so synergistic and strong that... I don't think you're going to come up with something that's much more powerful, but who knows? Maybe if you got a better build, let me know in the comment section. I'm interested. Prime Surefooted is just quality of life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. One thing to point out is I have no power strength on this build. I haven't increased the strength at all. I just don't think it's necessary. I don't think power strength is as 
It gives you as much return on investment in terms of taking up a mod slot on Harrow as it would on a Warframe like Chroma, for example. So instead, I've got Natural Talent. Natural Talent is a quality of life improvement. You don't have to cast. It also helps improve the, uh, the uh, reducing the duration you need to ca you channel your Thurible, and it just reduces the cast time on everything. And with Harrow, you're, you're spamming your abilities anyway it just it really helps reduce the amount of time you spent locked up in animations so for weapons the big one is nell prime uh, nell is what harrow was built with or what he was it's a signature weapon and he isn't he is a bit different from a lot of other warframes where his weapon really does synergize quite well with everything else in his kit uh, i'm using secondary deadhead because you're going to be going for headshots anyway I've got a Riven that's got uh, just raw damage. It's got cold damage, which is not what I want, but that's what I got. And net minus zoom. The minus zoom is quite helpful because you spend a lot of time zoomed in with the, this weapon. If you're not zoomed in with this weapon, it kicks like a mule and you're going to be shooting all over the place. Uh, everything on here is just damage. Damage, damage, damage. Crit chance, multi-shot. Uh, fire rate, you can stack as much fire rate as you want on this thing because after the first headshot, it has 100% perfect uh, ammo efficiency and you can just spray millions of bullets nonstop as long as you're continuing to get a headshot here and there every once in a while. Uh, this thing is like a machine gun on steroids. It's crazy. So because I've got cold damage on my Riven, I've put toxic damage in front of it with some status chance, which gives me some viral and then prime heated charge. As I said in a previous video is one of the reasons that pistols are, were so strong in the meta uh, in terms of applying status effects and, and applying massive uh, heat damage on enemies. So we use it again here to get some fat heat procs and strip armor off of enemies and just get that nice big fat damage bonus. Spry Sights gives increased movement speed when aiming and when you're playing Harrow, you're aiming down, if you're using the Nell, um, you're aiming down the sights quite a lot. For the wet, for the melee weapon, I'm using the Zorus. This is kind of a, just a kind of a nice to have. I don't melee very much with Harrow. I don't think most people would really. Uh, some people, sure, I'm sure they would. Maybe if you're playing a, a different type of build or using the helmet system to change something about them. The main reason I'm using this or any glaive really is because when you have your pistol out with a glaive, you have the glaive out at the same time and it will automatically deflect bullets that are coming at you from the front. So I have modified the glaive with uh, an increased parry angle so it deflects more bullets from a wider angle in front of me. And for the primary weapon, use whatever you want. I recommend a high rate of fire weapon if you're going to be using the Nell as your secondary and your main damage dealer because when a nullifier shows up uh, or for example, well really if a nullifier shows up, uh, it, you're going to have a bad day with a Nell Prime. Nell Prime, it has to be already activated in order to pop a nullifier bubble, but there is the odd instance where you're initiating a fight there's an enemy with a nullifier bubble and the Nell Prime is the worst weapon to use in that situation. So I switched to the primary weapon and again, any high rate of fa fire primary weapon is good here. Tenora Prime, this weapon, um, I don't know, uh, Tiberon Prime, there's just tons, whatever you want to use. Any, any high rate of fire uh, primary weapon is good. And yeah, oh yeah, finally, I'm using Vazarin because uh, it increases your affinity radius by 25 meters, which is actually quite a lot. And Harrow's abilities, his fourth ability, if I go all the way to the last one, both, pen oh, both Penance and Covenant affect all al allies within the shared affinity radius. And so using Vazarin uh, allows you to get uh, more radius and cover your teammates a little bit better with that. And that's it, that's the, uh, that's the build for Harrow. Uh, and uh, well, let's go ahead and, and put it to you. So I'm gonna go uh, to one of the most difficult, like crazy high challenge things. We're gonna go to Steel Path. We're gonna go to Mott. We'll have a squad. That's good uh, because Harrow is meant to be a support frame, really. One of the things that Harrow struggles with is having enemies surrounding him in 360 degrees. Um, he does best in hallways. He does best in corners. So uh, if you're going to be fighting out in the open, it's tricky. It's, it takes a lot of micro to play Harrow out in the open, and I don't recommend doing it. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my Kubra puts makes me invisible, so I'm safe to... There we go. Now I'm safe. Now I can walk around, I can channel my Thurible, and I don't have to worry about dying. This buys me lots of time to set this up. I'm going to cast Penance. I'm going to do this. I could get more uh, critical strike chance. And you can see it just, it absolutely decimates enemies. Oh, we got, we got bad latency. So I'm going to cast this to make me invisible. And because I have so much shields banked up, I'm going to, uh, there we go. Give me that damage. 2000 damage, more damage, more damage, more damage. Okay. Now we're going to do this. Here's the best part because of the augment that I put on. See on the bottom right, we're getting energy. I don't even have to get the kills. All I got to do is cast this. My teammate can get the kills. I am getting energy. I'm now an invisible, scary, uh, lock you down and you can't do anything. You just die Warframe. You really want to get high fire rate on the secondary with the Nell Prime because the fire rate is just so good. All right, let's um, deal with this uh, mini boss. Where's the mini boss at? Oh, it's these things. Hit me, please. Why are they not hitting me? Come on. Okay, good enough. This is really weird. The AI is so dumb. So even using the viral on uh, their shields was still quite good. Steel path mod, baby. Look at this. Just melting enemies. Like I said, you can spam your abilities with Harrow. Okay, let's go. Oh, the latency is driving me crazy. What the hell? Oh, instant revive. There we go. We're invisible. I can cast this. I will uh, revive. I should have cast it right before that. There we go. You want to kill these guys? Come on. Where's my teammate? She doesn't want to kill him. Oh, she's, oh, she's doing her buffs. That's why. There we go. I'm going to get some energy for myself. Oops. So I think I'll leave at five minutes. I think that's a good enough demonstration. Um, ideal situation for Harrow, you're on a team, you're in a corner, you're not out in the open like this. This is a more tricky way to play him, but it's doable. This build that I've shown you in this video has, uh, I've, I think I put maybe like around 200 hours of playtime as Harrow maybe, or maybe not necessarily playtime, but time spent uh, both playing and theory crafting Harrow and uh, yeah it's a pretty versatile build uh, the thing is Harrow himself is not a versatile Warframe he's pretty niche in his application let me go get this person if I can find them where's our where's that boss at there he is come on I need to get his head. Oh, what the heck? Okay, he's not getting hit. There we go. We're approaching the five minute mark. I will get just a little bit of energy to finish her off. And we're back to full energy and let's head out of here. Good enough.
it's that guy. He's just catching up with the uh, dialogue because he was blocked. He's cock blocked from being able to say what he wants to say by uh, Captain Vor. Right, let's. This coup brow is so helpful. So if the enemies show up, okay, first of all, we're able to block a lot of damage with our glaive. So if they're aiming, shooting at us from the front, I'm pretty sure we can just block it, as you can see. And now we're invisible. And extraction is really that easy. This is what I like about playing tank warframes, is I can just stand there and AFK, basically. And this coup brow allows you to do that with Harrow. It allows you to take a break during a long endurance run. Let's cast this to keep me and the dog alive. 78,000 damage. That's a lot of damage. Um, and yeah, pretty convenient build. Hope you liked the video. Hope you found it to be pretty entertaining. I will uh, spray my uh, Lotus thing right there. How much damage can we get on these guys? What? It's just, it's so satisfying. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Again, I'm Flying Scorpion, and uh, this has been kind of a in-depth, long-ish video talking about Harrow in Warframe in 2022. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. My hair, put my makeup on, it's Friday night, and I won't be long till I...